I'm at the end of bronchitis, um, so I hope I don't cough too much. And thank you to John Burroughs for hosting this. It says a lot that um, we're here, we're coming back to speak to your students tomorrow. It's a really big pleasure to be at Burroughs. And um, I'll tell you a second about what's going to happen tonight, and then I'll tell you about Ferguson. So we're going to watch, after I speak, we're going to watch about a 45-minute film that we made this summer that is seven shorts, and they're one film now, sort of vignettes about the untold stories of St. Louis and Ferguson, focusing on black and Jewish narratives. And then uh, the Reverend Mike Kinman will moderate a panel made up of some religious leaders and activists, and we'll talk about some issues, and you'll also get a chance for Q&A with the panel, and then you can hang around and uh, schmooze outside. <laughs> I want you to close your eyes for just a moment, and think about a time that you were trying to tell a story to someone. It was a really important story for you. And the person you were telling it to didn't believe you. Many of you might actually feel this way on a regular basis if you live in any one of many marginalized identities. But for all of you, it's likely that you may have felt that way as a child because most of us remember that feeling as children of not being listened to, not being taken seriously, or even having the stories we told dismissed outright. Keep your eyes closed for a second and just remember how frustrating that felt. You can open your eyes now if they were closed. And the feeling that I asked you to remember is the feeling that made me found the Fargesson Media Project. It started with a feeling that I felt every single time I heard the stories of Ferguson told by the media or by people in power, because it never sounded like the story that I knew. The plot was wrong, the ending was assumed, and many of the major characters were left out. Why was the story presented out of context? Why was there no necessary prequel of 400 years of racial oppression? Where was the empathy for Michael Brown's parents? Where were the women, the queer people, the Jews? Where was the narrative arc rising from profound oppression towards righteous anger? Where was the pervasive theme of justice? I wondered why the soundtrack was off. Where was the cadence that made me fall in love with this movement, the chants, the protests, the songs, the persistent hum of no justice, no peace? I said, if we don't get no justice, then they don't get no peace. I said, if we don't get no justice, they don't get no peace. <laughs> and it wasn't there. So I founded the Fargesson Media Project because of a feeling I had over and over of waking up in the morning to find that none of what I had witnessed the night before was portrayed accurately in the paper or on the news. I was angry reading reports that so rarely acknowledged that protesters were being brutalized by those our tax dollars employed and that they did so with weapons officially outlawed by the Geneva Convention. A few months later, in reading about the historical predecessors to Ferguson activists, I began to realize that there might be a chance to bring these issues to the forefront and join my voice with theirs in a bigger and long-lasting way. In rereading about the formative grassroots leadership of a gay man named Byard Rustin and a woman named Ella Baker, I began to feel that the way they had been, been written as minor characters in civil rights history was a warning for how the present day could be recorded. I felt more and more committed to preserving the stories of women and queer people this time around so that no future young activist had to stumble upon them in the future. You see, telling the story of a movement in a way that overemphasizes individual charismatic male leadership <coughs> and speaks of civil rights work in terms of individual miracle moments is a narrative choice. And I believe when we choose this narrative, we do not do our duty to tell the truth. We do not present movements as real, accessible, and made up of people who look like us. When we fail to tell the complexity of our stories, we do not teach history in a way that prepares us for the difficult problems we will face. 
For none of us will be Martin Luther King Jr. For he was one person, and he was tragically assassinated. <coughs> but each of us can be the best version of who we are. And it helps if we see ourselves <coughs> reflected in the stories we're told. So in January, in a conversation with my mentor, Rabbi Susan Talvi, who will be on the panel tonight, we spoke to each other, of fearing that this generation's story would become as whitewashed as that civil rights history many of us were raised on. I told her I had just learned that the Yiddish word Fergesen means forgotten, and joked wryly that Ferguson would probably mostly be forgotten. And she exclaimed, but we can't let that happen. I want them to know this was Ella Baker's movement. I want them to know it was led by mostly young women and that they quoted Asada Shakur. And then I replied, well, I guess we're going to have to tell them that. And as soon as I said that, it was true. We realized that due to privileged positions and an access to narrative, we were responsible for telling the truth about the story we had witnessed. And once we agreed about that, we just had to figure out the rest. So what you'll see tonight is simply some of what we have figured out. I picked a few stories I felt needed telling and that no one else would necessarily tell and have tried to tell the truth. Fergusson Media is based on the belief that we must reflect on our history while it happens or we will forget. It is an assertion that our narrative is unique, important, and can only be truly told by the people who lived it. Fergusson was produced because I believe that future generations need to know the names of the women and trans people who helped us get free. They need to know Reverend Tracy Blackman, Rabbi Susan Talvey, Brittany, Alexis, Angel, Amy, Mo, Rini, KB, need to know that we set up makeshift healing spaces in churches and synagogues. There were mirrored coffins and sacred drums. They need to know that we paid each other's bills so that the baby had diapers, so mom could stand in the streets for true and lasting justice. So please, Immerse yourself in these stories. Let yourself be angered by the media or chastised and humbled by Rabbi Susan and Pastor Tracy, Brittany and Alexis, renewed and inspired by the drumbeats of KB. These people are precious to me, and I bring them to you today because I believe that you will want to learn from them with courage and love. And all that I ask is that you hear their stories, try to remember their names, and tell of them, Lador Lador, as we say in Judaism, from generation to generation. Tell people what you have learned about Ferguson. Please tell them that we struggled with what it meant to work for freedom, with how to be angry and loving at the same time. Tell them that when we saw the truth being twisted, we stepped in and tried to tell the story correctly. And please tell them that we really did our best to tell it well.